Okay guys, before we fully dive into the video, I would like to encourage you to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I'd like to say straight away, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I've got no formal qualifications um, in being able to tell if somebody's using drugs or not. This is purely a fan's perspective on an interesting topic that I saw discussed online. Um, not trying to out anybody, I just because somebody's physique might be included in this video or some of the bumps on their stomach might be included on this video, it doesn't mean that I think they're necessarily a drug cheat and you shouldn't assume that either. Now obviously I have nothing against people who take anything, for example, this little guy right here is called Chael Sonnen. He's named after the, one of the worst drug cheats we've ever seen, so take that for what it's worth. So this first came to my attention when Tony Ferguson brought it up in an interview leading up to his interim title bout against Kevin Lee, where he accused Kevin Lee of taking human growth hormone. You know, you're saying you, I fought an unjuiced Alfeo Dos Anjos. Are you off the juice, Kevin? You know, there's a YouTube video out there with you and saying growth hormones and you got bumps all over your stomach. You know what I did is I imagine you were 100 times the size that you were when I was training for you. I made sure that I was going in. Now, this did spark my interest and I looked up pictures of Kevin Lee to see if I could find what Tony Ferguson was talking about. And it is true on some pictures you can see these peculiar marks coming up on uh, Kevin Lee's abdominal area. And I tried to find the video in which these are detailed and is pointed out as to being as a result of taking human growth hormone, but I couldn't find the video anywhere. So I decided to dig a little deeper and I went and saw if I could find anything on any of the online forums. To be honest, it was just a lot of people spreading misinformation, calling each other dumb, people who didn't really understand how growth hormone is administered. So I guess in this video, what I'm looking to do is break down exactly whether or not these marks could be caused by human growth hormone, how likely it is, and if anything else could be the cause of these marks. That's a stupid question, dude. Now, as I said, this has been discussed on MMA forums for a significant amount of time. Specifically on Sherdog, there are a number of threads that have many pictures pointing out various guys who also share these same markings that Kevin Lee does. I'm not trying to out anybody, so I've blurred out all their faces, but I'm sure some of you are going to be able to tell who these people are. So I've only used images from Sherdog that have already been put out there publicly. These pictures are already out there. I've blurred out their faces and their distinctive tattoos as much as I can. People are going to find out who they are. Okay, so first off, why would a fighter want to take human growth hormone in the first place? Why would that be a particular uh, drug or performance enhancer that would be a preference as opposed to, let's take uh, another steroid, for example? Why would a fighter particularly want to use human growth hormone? Well, the hormone can be used to speed up healing after an injury. It could also be used to repair muscles after vigorous workouts. Um, and it helps boost muscle mass. It also helps boost your metabolism and burn fat. So there are a number of reasons why a fighter might want to take uh, human growth hormone for those reasons. But also HGH has a lot less adverse effects or side effects than a typical steroid would. So for example, uh, human growth hormone is a lot less addictive uh, than, than typical steroids. So there are some people on bodybuilding forums who will argue that human growth hormone isn't as good at producing large amounts of muscle mass as testosterone. However, human growth hormone, because of the fewer side effects and because it's less addictive, could be argued to be a better drug for recovery purposes. And seeing as UFC fighters aren't trying to gain lots of muscle mass, they're looking to us to improve athletic performance, it's understandable why they might be turning to human growth hormone instead of a traditional steroid. Everybody's on steroids. Another reason why an athlete might choose to take human growth hormone is because that's incredibly hard to detect. A urine analysis test isn't going to be able to pick up whether somebody's take human growth hormone. And even if you use a really expensive blood test, chances are it's not going to be able to pick it up since human growth hormone breaks down in the body so quickly it has an incredibly short detection window. However, the latest and more sophisticated tests do look for an unnatural increase in IGF-1 and P3NP, which occurs after somebody has injected human growth hormone. Now, this remains in the body for a little bit longer, uh, somewhere between 3 to 10 hours, I believe. And also it remains active in the cell receptors for up to three days. It is the ability to detect HGH in the cell receptors which has really strengthened the detection methods for picking up human growth hormone. And this has led to some of the fighters like Kung Lee and Chael Sonnen having tested positive for the drug in the past. Retest that! You must have caught me on a low bed! Okay, but why would these guys be injecting human growth hormone into their abs? Surely it would be a lot more understandable if these roid heads were injecting it into their ass or directly into their biceps or something. Okay, so although you can inject human growth hormone intramuscularly, which is like into the deltoid or into the bicep, you would be much better off injecting human growth hormone subcutaneously into somewhere like your abdominals. 
Now the difference between an intramuscular injection and a subcutaneous injection is that an intramuscular injection is an injection straight into a particular muscle like the deltoid, whereas a subcutaneous injection is done by pinching your skin and injecting directly into the roll, basically. So what are the benefits of injecting something subcutaneously as opposed to injecting something intramuscularly? So one reason might be that it's simply less painful to inject subcutaneously into your abs as opposed to directly into a muscle. But also, St. Mary's Hospital Medical School, Imperial College of Technology, Science and Medicine, London, found that growth hormone absorption is actually site dependent. They concluded that following the injection of human growth hormone, the absorption rate was significantly better when injected into the abdominal region as opposed to the thigh. However, repeated injections into the same region can cause a condition what is known as localized lipodystrophy. Now this is where you can inject over and over and over again in the same region and then it ends up creating these sort of odd dents. Now they don't particularly look too uh, disfigured or they don't look sore necessarily but you do get these dents or bumps that occur on people's abdominals after they've injected repeatedly into the same area and this is what people are claiming they have seen on these UFC fighters. Okay so that's something it could be what else could be causing these marks? Anything, literally anything. Could be spots, could be ingrown hairs, could be mosquito bites, could be a rash, could be insulin injections, it could literally be any number of things that could be causing these bumps. The question becomes, at what point does it become too much of a coincidence that we're seeing all of these professional athletes with these bumps are associated with human growth hormone injections? It's up to you to decide. Personally, I think a lot of these guys like to shave themselves down before they go up for their weigh-ins and they want to look good, they want to look ripped, so they shave all their body hair off. And I think often we're seeing, you know, ingrown hairs or shaving rashes on their bodies. And now, for the twist. Anjos. You know, you're saying you, I fought an unjuiced Alfredo Dos Anjos. Are you off the juice, Kevin? You know, there's a YouTube video out there with you and saying growth hormones and you got bumps all over your stomach. <laughs> you know what I did? Is I imagine you were a hundred times the size that you were. When At this point, it's as good as a conspiracy, to be honest. So take everything with a pinch of salt. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I do weekly predictions on what I think is going to happen in the upcoming UFC events and I will continue to be doing some more of these shorter topics as well.